shit. Um, I'm opening up Ableton real quick. How do I fix any of this? All right, whatever. Bro, this thing sucks. There we go. All right, yo. What is up everyone? My name is Eli and in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite plugins recently called 2C Kaleidoscope. And I kind of want this video to kind of just talk about what this plugin can be used for and some of its like special features, I guess, and why I think it's really cool for um, like more melodic genres and that kind of stuff. So I want to start by kind of just talking about like what can this plugin even do? Like what is this plugin? So this plugin is basically a resonator and it's not a typical resonator where it's the knobs you adjust the pitch with and stuff and of the specific tunings and this plugin is more unique because instead of like manually controlling the pitch of the certain individual resonators whatever like you usually do in, in like corpus um in, in the ableton stock resonator with this plugin you can actually use images that you can input or the ones that are built in to control the resonator and how it's going to sound so i think one of the first things to try kaleidoscope on would just kind of be a saw wave because i think that's just a good way of getting a, a good idea of what the plugin or the effect you're going to be putting on the signal is going to sound like i think saw waves are or just basic shapes in general are a good way to test out what plugins do so i'm going to go ahead and open up an instance of analog here and i'm going to go ahead and put kaleidoscope on the saw wave here and so right off the bat you can hear it kind of sounds like a disperser almost or like just a I don't know, like, a, like it sounds like it sounds kind of like corpus in a, in, a, in a sense where it has that kind of muffled sound. Um, and I think that's because there's there's different kinds of resonators, re like resonator engines. So right on the default is the spring. There's a single spring engine. If I click this little pill up here, I can get a double spring. Um, and then I can get the string resonator here, which is going to sound completely different. And just like the spring one, there's also a double string resonator. And then there's also uh, just nothing. Yeah, so for the sake of this example, I'm probably gonna stick on just the string and the string mode just to kind of go back and forth between them to see what the difference is. Let's go ahead and start by adding an image into this uh, image area right here. And the way to do that is to go up here to this tab where it says image and then click here and you can choose through any of the, the preset ones. I have an extra library installed called architecture, which is kind of just an expansion pack, but it's not really necessary for this tutorial. I'm not gonna really be going into that, that pack or that folder very much. I'm gonna go to AV1 complex. Let's do rhythm constructed. So this is what it sounds like whenever I just play a saw wave through this. So as you can tell, it kind of sounds like wet and interesting and you can you can see what the image thing is doing it's kind of acting like a filter and it's filtering where the resonator is going to be affecting um in like certain frequencies and this really gives this effect an insanely unique quality because you can do crazy modulation and these kind of crazy textures with resonators by using these images and these these kind of patterns like any resonator you can adjust the feedback one of the downsides about this effect is that you can't modulate any of the parameters. And you can see whenever I adjust the parameter, even when I'm playing the signal, it doesn't happen in real time. I think one of the reasons that is, is because this synth can, or this effect can handle up to 2 million points of automation simultaneously, which is insane. I think that this effect is meant to be kind of a static thing. So you might be wondering, why can't I move this thing up all the way past this line? Well, that's because there's not enough partials. So the way to add partials is to go to this really small little window up here where it has a P and a D. P stands for partials and D stands for duplicates. So if I go and just click this twice, you'll see that the window expands and I'm, I'm, I'm able to open and close this all the way um, to get the maximum resonation. Resonation. I don't know, one of those things. sounds ridiculous and kind of weird kind of crazy so i'm gonna click this one more time to get rid of these gray bars i think i think this might be doing something yeah so let's go ahead and try some different rhythms So to change the speed of everything that's happening, you can go up here and click this measures and divisions button and just change this to four on the measures so it's a lot slower. Mm -hmm. 
Now this is cool and all, but we can also add an extra layer of complexity to this entire synth. So as if, as if you've noticed at all, I'm only on the input section. If I go here to the output section, there's an entire other window for an image. And so for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a different image here. So this time let's go to composite checkerboard and do something different here. And I'm gonna make this also four over one just to match this, the speed of the first input here. So let's see, let's see what this sounds like now. So what this has done basically is I've, I've basically applied two filters. There's a first one, and then this output signal is gonna go into the second output filter, which is gonna be outputted to the master. And so you can get two levels of complexity here at the filters to kind of add even more movement to the first sound, which I think is really, really nice. So let's go ahead and add a scale to add some more melodic content to this saw wave. So one of the things about Kaleidoscope is that there's an infinite number of scales. There are so many musical scales and different tunings to use that it honestly becomes kind of confusing and hard to find the right scale to use. So if I remember correctly, the Useful scales are in chordal, chord harmonics, ET, and then three note and four note. Uh, oh, architecture, melodic, chordal. Mm. All right, so the chord that I want to go ahead and mess with or the scale I want to mess with is in this, this directory. So it's kaleidoscope, AV1, chordal, chord harmonics, ET, three note, and then Chet 3 minor open. So you can see how this can become really confusing to find chords, um, which is why I think that you should kind of just stick to this like little folder here of like chords. This is kind of where all the usable ones are. I honestly don't really know what the use for these mathematical ones are or like Gaussian bands. I think this is more just sound design stuff, but. So before we go any further with the sound, I'm gonna go ahead and add a limiter to this so it doesn't clip and cause a lot of issues. Awesome. So in Kaleidoscope, there's also these little small buttons on the side of the main knobs. And these are just extra functions for the specific knobs and what they do. For example, random here, if I make this 100% random, it's gonna start smearing the phase of the the resonators. There's this little small thing right here called the random phase. If I make this like 200%, you can hear it starts sounding really smeared and really nice. Compared to like down here at like zero. So it's kind of very subtle effect, but I think these kind of things can be useful to add different qualities to the things you put into Kaleidoscope. Um, another cool thing to mess with is this relative feedback. And so if this is all the way negative 100%. You get, you get kind of a different sounding feedback. And if this is at 100%. It starts to to be more intense with the feedback. Over here, there's also different dampening modes um, and you can change them by clicking where this H is, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so you can change these for like different filter shapes. So you can use those to kind of adjust the, the sound and where in the frequency it's gonna be affecting the most. One last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about with this synth is that there's a modulation wheel and that kind of affects the image in a bunch of different ways. So let's say we have a really complex image like this and we wanna like change it up a bit. So this modulation wheel can do different things. And just like these little buttons on the side here, this right here can change the kind of amount or like the effect that is gonna be like changing the image. So if I just cycle through these different parameters, you can see what, exactly what they do. Um, and I think that this, this little line on the side here is the modulation line. And so if I change this, you see like the shape of the line changes as well. So I think that has to do with something, but these are kind of all subtle effects. Some of them are more crazy than others. others like this one like that kind of looks insane and does some really weird stuff
So let's do something more abstract for this. Let's go to complex rhythm displaced. Or let's do complex circles, something like that. So if you guys remember the original sound for this entire thing where this all started was literally just a saw wave. So this is really useful, especially if you wanna do something like this. So let's just go ahead and make the root note of the chords a C sharp, just like the root note of this bass. So down here, you can also offset the image by just dragging these little small lines. And so if you want something to be more on time or have a different kind of timbre, you can move it either left and right or up and down. So that's pretty sick. Now, just to think that all of this, this kind of crazy sound and ambience came from literally just adding this plugin to a saw wave without any of the effects, which is just one effect, it sounds exactly like this. Yeah, so I just wanted to give a kind of a quick overview and a little walkthrough of the interface of this plugin and also kind of make an example along the way to kind of show you the possibilities of what this plugin can do and how much you can actually just change a sound. I do have one more little example here that I want to talk about, which is using it as a filter, like a kind of weird spectral filter, which you can totally do. So I have this little, um, I have this little rack called Kaleidoscope Filter. I think, no, it's called Kaleido Filter. Yeah, so just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a saw wave with analog here. And I only have this going through one sound. I think one thing here, if I just expand this all the way. <laughs> Yeah, so basically it's the same thing as before, but instead of using it as a resonator, you can use it as a filter by just turning this feedback all the way down, disabling the first input resonator, using two springs and using the second output as the filter shape. And you can see as I change this image shape, you get different filter sounds. <laughs> It sounds actually really sick. So I'm gonna put this over maybe here. It's like offset a little bit. 
Yeah, this is like, it's offset. It usually isn't like that. I think it's just because I opened it on a really weird timing. You can get even crazier complex results like this. So by using some of the same techniques I talked about a second ago, you can you can kind of expand on this simple filter and make it sound more spectral and weird. Also, yeah, by also like adding the filter and like the, the feedback back up, you can turn this into a really weird resonator filter sound with these weird kind of melodic things. <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this effect because I think that it has a lot of crazy possibilities. And so I hope that these couple examples kind of helped show you guys the possibilities of what can be done with the synth. I didn't want to like go over too many features or kind of spoil too many of the surprises because I think that a lot of the fun with experimentation with music production is trying it out for yourself and developing your own technique and your own kind of style. I think that's what pushes the, the, the genre forward even more. And so I kind of just wanted to show you guys and kind of spread awareness about this awesome plugin because I think that more people should know about it and more people should be using it for all the things that it can do. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more content like this, you can go check out my Patreon. I'm gonna be pointing to it like right here, somewhere on the screen. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. I'll also put a link in the description. Um, I make sample packs every month and I also make videos every now and then. This is my first video in a while because I've been kind of busy with school. But I hope you guys enjoy the editing on it. It's my first time trying to edit a video. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for another video next month pretty soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And peace. I'll see you later.